joined with Scott Hanson and I've, I've literally Scott's just finished a session here um, so we pulled him away um, he's just wrapped up questions and he's agreed to talk to us which is awesome hi Scott how going? are you it's good to see you we worked on a thing in 2011 yeah, together so. yep. Yep. yeah when I talk I just came off stage and I was talking about being a social developer and one of the things that I talked about is when I created a system by which I could see people remotely and we turned that into Link Auto Answer so that I could basically call a bot and see it remotely and I could you know, interact with my coworkers without them having to say answer call. Right. I was going to ask you about that actually because the world's moved on, we have teams now. Is that better? Like, are the same problems still there? Like, have they been fixed? What's your take on that? Because you, you work from home a lot. Well, the, the thing is that we have privacy to think about, and I want, but I still want to be able to call a bot or a place and have it auto answer. Now I can automate that with Teams more than I could with with Link before, because our solution, you know, auto it, had, it needed to answer the phone, go full screen. Um, I think there's still value in that, but but privacy concerns, you don't want to necessarily be able to just flip on a two-way camera anywhere at all. But I haven't gone and built it because people are very friendly with teams and now everyone has a webcam and when we were doing it yeah. webcams were not ubiquitous absolutely yeah no absolutely i still get emails about that do you yeah i do as well yeah. it's funny yeah That's it's so cool, it's so cool. Well, 10 years it's, later it's a great example of the things you were just talking about actually of, of being out there and, and doing stuff and, and being visible and yeah well what was fun about it is when we did this when we created this little thing together we hadn't met together we talked about it online we were very friendly with each other about about credit or lift about you did this and I worked on that and then we shared the website and even now it's still out there and we keep it running because there are solutions people are actually still using that in hospitals uh, and also we made it up a, a pan tilt zoom system for remote pan tilt zoom as well yeah so it was very cool yeah. um, you I mean you've been at Microsoft 12 years yeah. something like that right the, the world has changed like you used to it used to be easy to be if you were a Microsoft developer everybody knew what you were doing you were doing WinForms and you were doing web now it's it feels like it's way more complicated as do I need to learn everything like what does that what does that mean what does it mean to be a Microsoft developer now you know that's a good question that's a wonderful question i think that we should decide what that means. Mm -hmm. Because I don't think being a Microsoft developer means being a .NET developer anymore, nor does it mean being a Visual Studio developer. Maybe we go and take over that, that name and we redefine it. And it means a flexible developer, a developer who understands the fundamentals that we know will never go away. Mm -hmm. uh, and it'll be someone who can use some Microsoft products and then integrate those Microsoft products with other non-Microsoft products to make a successful solution. And we can reclaim that old title, Microsoft developer, make it something new. Oh, that'd be, that's, is that a call to arms for, I mean, is there anything wrong with still know, being a Windows Mobile? Yeah. You, you had the idea, yeah. so yeah. <laughs> well, let's do, do it together. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It, it, it feels, you know, like uh, sometimes I feel this as I, I don't know Kubernetes, for instance. Like, mm -hmm. should I? Am I supposed to? No, but you do know it in that you know the boxes and the lines. You mm. get what its problem is. Like, I don't know hybrid cars. Right, I learned on a 63 Ford Falcon and I had three, you know, three on the tree, as they mm -hmm. say, or four on the floor. You know, I know how to double clutch. Mm -hmm. uh, and now we got electric cars, but I'm still able to, able to call an Uber. You know, I get that it's a car. So you know how to scale web systems. I think you'd figure Kubernetes out in a couple of weekends. Yeah, so it's more about knowing that it exists. You don't need to know all the details, right? You don't need, and you don't need to be a mechanic, right? The thing about Kubernetes is that right now, you need to know the internals. Tomorrow, Kubernetes will be a checkbox, and then it'll be a slider bar. So I, I've been doing this for a long time. You've been doing this for a while. I've, been, I've got a three-page resume. Three pages. You know, you, got, like, you know how they always say you should have a one-page resume? I got a three-freaking-page resume. Page two was learning how to scale a website. Well, now I have page one and page three because I've ripped out page two and it's a slider bar. Yeah. And, and do I feel bad about that? Do I like, I lost the 90s mm -hmm. where I was learning how to scale websites? No, I just deal with it. You know what I mean? So now I got a two page resume with odd numbered pages. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, the, the other thing, I love that idea. Like, is that for real? Like, yeah, oh, real I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> I used to work at a place called 800.com back when you could mm -hmm. get a three letter domain. Mm -hmm. We flew in Cisco Local Director. I mean, the idea of, sa of, of scaling out a website, that was a thing. You would actually go and, hey, can you scale a website out? Sure. I would go and buy the rack. I'd rack it up. I, I mean, I did the work. And now, you know, the 20 year old like slides the slider bar and it's like, oh, this website's taking like a minute. Blah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I, I can be salty about it, or I can be excited about our new electric car future, and Kubernetes will become a slider bar, and then their resume will have less pages. Yeah. The, other, the other thing that's changed is that the whole dev stack 
that Microsoft are getting involved in and, and, and are owning and being involved with is way more open than it used to be. Like that's been a massive thing in the past couple of years. From the inside, from the you know your job and the things that you do, what's that been? What's that been like? We used to have legal the legal department, they change the name of the legal department all the time. Uh, the legal people used to just say no. They literally were just like, they existed to say no to stuff. And now they literally exist to figure out how to say yes. Ooh, I love that. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Like I, I used memes in my, in my talk and, and I had to go and get them cleared by legal. And I didn't feel like they were working against me. They were trying to find ways to make sure that this would be appropriate and, you know, fair use. That's a great example. So when you fundamentally become yes people rather than no people then you can get a lot more work done and have there been have there been challenges along the way apart from the legal stuff have you like um licensing can be confusing um the the pedigree of open source code like for example if someone came to us with our link thing and wanted to license it 10 years later you and i'd have to go dig up a bunch mm. of stuff about where we got it from and hopefully we didn't copy paste anything from stack overflow pedigree or of, of the the family tree of source code can be challenging, especially when you're trying to open source something. But mm -hmm. I think we're getting better at that and there's tools to help that. Uh, that's been a tough thing, uh, getting legal to understand. Some teams aren't as open as others, mm -hmm. uh, but we at, in .NET and in the developer division are open by default. Basically everything we do is open unless it's got a really good reason to be closed. And I'm not able to think of anything that I've worked on in the last five or ten years that's been closed. I'd have to think about it. Yeah, yeah that's cool. It's, it's, it's just kind of interesting with all the different language supports as well. That's, that's something that's so new and interesting is seeing support when things come out. They come out on day one with support not just for .NET, not just for C Sharp, VP.NET, but mm -hmm. a number of languages that are not Microsoft languages. So I was in a thing, I was in a, a, a talk, I was teaching at a university uh, down in San Diego uh, last week, and uh, someone made this joke, and I'm going to pick on a particular country. They said, you know Finland? They speak Finnish there. Why don't they just give up? Like, their language is not going to win. <laughs> right. Think about that, how silly that is. Yeah. They like their language. They like their culture. Now, what if we were to say, you know, Rust or Scala, or just pick some language, you know, some really, I don't know, maybe in a more obscure language than those, some language with five speakers. Should they give up? Or should they be preserved? You wouldn't go and say that. You wouldn't say that we should throw away a, a language. You shouldn't go and throw away a community. So then why not support everybody and then standardize on the edges? Wow. Yeah, that's... It's deep. That, huh? that, that is, like, you should find a Finnish person there's and a, ask them what they think. You, yeah, well, there's a thing, a whole thing about being proud of your language as well. That's See? So be proud of your language. And that's the thing that's great about not that, whether it be C Sharp, VB, or F Sharp, there is value and expressiveness in those things. And there's poetry in each language. Mm. And we, we talked a bit about being a social developer, and I know you've talked before about black hole developers. Like we, uh, dark matter developers. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Dark matter developers. Yeah, yeah. So is that still a problem? I think I heard that from you well, a few so years ago. Is it still people, a problem? Has it? Yeah. Some people like that title, some people don't. But I think that the analogy is a fun one. So what is dark matter? It's the space between the stars. So if you accept this idea that there's this rock star developer, which is nonsense, but let's say just visible developers, people on Twitter, people who have a presence. We've all had that friend that we can go and Google with Bing for that we can't find. Mm. You know, I don't have a footprint on the internet. Those are dark matter developers. The problem with dark matter in space is we don't know how much there is. For every two stars, there's, what, a billion? Like, how much space in between? So for every one Tom and every one Scott, is there a thousand quiet, maybe we'll call them quiet developers. Mm -hmm. You know why they're quiet? They're working. Mm -hmm. And they don't maybe feel the need to toot their own horns about it. Right. Is that a problem, or is that just... It's not a problem, it's an awareness. Mm -hmm. We don't, dark matter isn't threatening. Mm. We don't want to turn dark matter into stars. We just want to recognize that they're there. So if we have a message that we want to get to them, we have to go where they are. Right, yeah. Okay, right. that's interesting. Yeah. yeah, I like that idea. Thank yeah. you. So, this is a kind of short, simple, but I'm not sure what the answer is going to be question. What do you do now at Microsoft? <laughs> and I'm sorry, I, that sounds like a, such a horrible question what because it's obvious what you do. Exactly. Like, what it's obvious, it used to be, to me, like, you're a developer, like you were leading a team, yeah. and now uh, I think you're still doing that, but I'm not really sure. Because <laughs> you, your job title changed a while back. Right? No, so job titles are, are nonsense, right? I mean, I'm a program manager. I've been a program manager the whole time I've been at Microsoft. When I started at Microsoft, I worked in MSDN, the Microsoft uh, Developer Network. I now work for Scott Hunter, who owns Runtimes. .NET and whatnot underneath Visual Studio. So I'm working the developer division and I lead a team uh, that works on .NET community. 
So Jeff Fritz, John Galloway, Nisha Nil, Maria Nagaga, Jamie Singleton, Ron Miller, they're my team. They work on lots of different things from docs to Microsoft Learn to videos to Twitch and all those kind of things. Okay, fantastic. Scott, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. Um, and we're going to throw back to the live stage. I'm not supposed to.